Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. It's just curious, you know, really, for me personally, and as I look around, you know, our other brothers and sisters on this planet, it's, it's, a, it's a curious time, it's a tricky time. And maybe, you know, we've done a lot of shows and maybe that's always been the case in the last who knows how many years. But it seems like particularly at this moment, at this time, on this planet, that a lot of change is happening, a lot of growth, a lot of new paradigms, a, a lot of transmuting negativity into positivity, a lot of movement from fear and separation into love and oneness. And although it's curious and somewhat tricky, what, what a blessed and fortunate and amazing time for us to be in human bodies on this planet at this time. To be part of what we all can sense is, is a real change, is a real transformation, is a real grand blessing and opportunity to really fulfill our individual human lives and, and the life of, of us collectively as a species on this glorious planet Earth. To come into a recognition and a fulfillment of, of who and, and what we really are as human beings. And what a gift and what a blessing and what an opportunity to recognize and experience what we call on Bridging Heaven and Earth, the oneness, the truth, the God, that internal connection of which we are all one. Where nothing is outside of it, nothing is separate. And how can we come together in this curious time, in this powerful time of change, in creativity, in collaboration, and to, to experience first, to realize, and to spread that vibration of unconditional love, of the inclusion, of the infinite, of oneness, together, joyously and lovingly. And that, that is really, you know, an amazing, an amazing opportunity for us together on this planet to go from fear into love, to go from separation into the realization, the fulfillment of our oneness, of our connectedness, of who we really are, of fulfilling our destiny. And we can do it. Together we can. Together we can. And, you know, one of the grand obstacles of doing that is that we have concepts of each other and experiences that we think are real of each other as being separate. So how can we put forth and experience and realize a vibration that is of our oneness, that is of our connectedness, and that is our opportunity now to do that together. And again, it is why we come together on Bridging Heaven and Earth and why people come in from all over the world with extraordinary gifts and fantastic talents and, and intention and power and just the unbelievable desire to serve, to serve love, to serve truth, to serve the infinite, to serve what we call God. And that, tonight's guest, Susan Sandiford, is, is one of those extraordinary beings. She's known worldwide as a gifted and authentic spiritual medium and teacher. And through her seminars, her sacred sight tours, and her gift of mediumship and inspiring spiritual counseling, uh, Susan has had a profound healing effect on literally thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands all over the world. She's a renowned author uh, of many, many books, including What's Up with 2012. And with her husband, Milt, uh, she's creating a non-denominational healing retreat center, uh, Casa de Santa Maria in San Luis, uh, Colorado. And just, you know, we hadn't met before today, but just in the, the little time, the few hours that we've spent together, that she has that incredible dedication, that incredible hunger to serve, hunger to, to feel love and share it. And we're so 
honored here at Bridging that Susan has come to, to share her, her experiences, her gifts, her knowledge, her wisdom, and her love with us. You know, and as most of you know, on most bridging shows, we have music videos or art music videos or some kind of other spoke on the wheel to, to express that vibration of love and oneness and inclusion in the infinite. And tonight we have an extraordinary example of that. Just inspiring, gifted, talented, again, dedicated, unrelenting in his pursuit of love. An experience of love, uh, Guru Ganesha. Uh, I, we have two parts of a beautiful video of him and his music and him talking about service and love and truth. And as most of you know, we're in the middle of an international healing art project as well. It came as a, a vision, it came as a dream, as a healing, as an acupuncture for the planet to reach out to the world and to say we will use this bridging format this bridging distribution system that goes out all over the world on sky channel tv in europe on cable stations all over the united states on the internet millions and millions of people have watched it brit the bridging shows on youtube and vimeo and that anybody who wants to any skill level any size any medium any format any age produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth and we'll have it on the shows, we'll have art project shows, we have an extraordinarily beautiful website, heaventoearthart.com, where we've had already manifested over 350 pieces, all new original pieces based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And as, as I've said many times before, if someone wants to be inspired, if somebody wants to be empowered, if somebody's having a good day, I want a better day, a bad day, I want a good day, go to heaven to earth art, heaven to earth, a -R -T dot com, and just start flipping through these incredible manifestations of love produced by people of all skill levels, all ages, from all over the world. And there are probably a, another 500 who just haven't gotten around to doing it, but are committed to being part of that project. So the International Healing Art Project. So tonight we have two pieces as a surprise. Susan, who we didn't even know, uh, had manifested a piece, brought her piece, so that's going to be with us tonight. And then this extraordinary artist from Canada, Marjo Lee, uh, has produced a beautiful, beautiful piece that we will show with that and tell you about it and you know, read to you what she wrote in producing the piece. So again, an opportunity for us all to come together. However you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, feel the love, feel, the, feel yourself as infinite, feel yourself as included. There is nothing that doesn't include you. And we are all together here to be brothers and sisters, to be joyous and loving and to, to serve the love. So join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first part of the Guru Ganesha video, and then we'll have Susan and Art and an opportunity to be together. Okay, as I said before, we're going to show this amazing being, Guru Ganesha, uh, his music videos in two parts. And, you know, thank you to Guru Ganesha and Spirit Voyage Music for making them available to us. You'll love them, just settle in, and then we'll have Susan with us. Enjoy. Guru Ganesha had a dream to sing, to play music, and to share his love of this path. Great honor to introduce Guru Ganesha and his band. Sri Guru Sahiba Sapa Upa. Sri Guru Sahiba Sapa Upa. Manabatsa. I 
rise up now, everybody. So rise up and praise the Lord. Hi everybody, welcome back. So Guru Ganesha, beautiful music, beautiful being. And we'll see more of that later on. And the beautiful piece of amazing art you're singing between Susan and I is Freeing Your Spirit, done by Susan, which was a big surprise. We didn't know it was coming. And when she got here today, here it was. So what did you experience when you were doing this? And how can you surprise us? And how did that work out that it was just this you know, last minute manifestation of so much love well i think uh, spirit kind of triggered that because i wasn't planning on bringing a piece of art and because i don't paint or those kind of things but i thought well hmm, let me just meditate on it and i just kind of got this picture of the heart with the wings which has always meant a lot to me because i fully believe we have this incredible portal or ve vortex within our heart that transports us into other dimensions and if we go inward and we find that space within our heart or that love space it literally can uh, transform us into forgetting about our ego forgetting about our world but connecting us with that higher divine connection through love and it, it truly that process sets us free the heart it's the heart when you move into the heart it just changes the world and so that's kind of what that represents to me is going inward, finding that love space, finding that heart, applying it to everything, and then you're set free to fly within the world. Wow, beautiful. And we talk a lot about, and as I said at the opening a little bit, you know, the, it came as a vision, as a dream, this International mm -hmm. Healing Art Project, as a, as a healing, as an acupuncture, but what really was, was a healing the heart of the planet, healing mm -hmm. the heart. Why don't you talk a little bit about and what you mean about healing the heart, and I know that's such an important part of your play and work and you know, destiny and service and all that. And then we'll talk about how you came to being where you sure. are now. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, the heart does play a really, really important part in our spiritual awakening because uh, once you find love and divine love, um, there's a difference between human love and divine love. But once you invite that divine love into your being, it moves right into your heart and awakens you, and it heals it. And many of us have broken hearts. I certainly had a, a broken heart. I certainly didn't know what love was, and I in, just invited, okay, is there a divine being out there that loves me? Would you come in and show me that? And that started the mystical and metaphysical experiences and healing uh, that needs to take place and that's a massive part of the spiritual journey is that uh, purification process um, which leads you to this point where you discover that you are love you've always been loved and all that brokenness just falls away and you're finally able to love yourself just the way you are warts and all and recognize that that divinity loves us that way at all and all this other stuff that we think we've done right or haven't done right or right or wrong just melts away and we finally recognize our own divinity and you do that through the heart the heart is the place to go it is through love and uh, 
when you invite it in, this transformation that happens is just amazing. And you would say that when we talk about a broken heart, we're talking about somehow feeling separate or experiencing ourselves as separate from that Correct. unconditional love, that oneness, that God, as we call it. Correct. And a lot of that, you know, most of us were born into families that were either dysfunctional or didn't know that. And so we think we are not worthy enough, we're not good enough. Um, even our religions, you know, I was raised in a fundamentalist Christian religion, which taught you that you were this awful sinner and you were going to die and you're going to go to hell and you could never measure up to God. And that's what really started my spiritual journey. When I was 38, I sat down on the couch and I said, God, where are you? I've done it all right. I've prayed. I've done what the preachers wanted me to do. I went to Bible school. I said, where's that God of miracles? Where's the God that parted the Red Sea? Where are you? And then this thought went through my head. I said, you know what? I'm going to throw all that out the window, and I want you to show me what truth is. And that, that was the moment I started an intimate relationship with the divine. My terminology for it at the time was God. It's shifted from, the, from God to divine creator, divine spirit, the all that is. Um, and, but at that time where I was, that's what I did. I invited it in, and that's when all the metaphysical dreams, experiences, my search for God began. I wanted to know truth, but I went directly to the source. I wasn't going to go around to a guru. I wasn't going to go around to a preacher to say or a book. And uh, what I found was you could have this intimate connection with this divine essence that loves us immensely just the way we are. And that's where my journey and has gone. And it took me on that journey of going within, of finding uh, my own darkness, what was unhealed, my own worthiness, unworthiness, where I didn't think I was good enough um, to heal. That's what I was taught, you know, as a kid that you weren't good enough. Or, and even though I had a really decent childhood, you know, think of all the other people out there that came in with abuse. Uh, whether it be sexual or emotional, um, and how wounded that is, and they totally get separated from their divinity. They don't even know it's there. And so in my own journey, learning how in spirit teaching me, divine spirit teaching me how to get there, uh, my greatest joy is helping reawaken people to find that within themselves, to move into the heart and realize they are oh so loved, just the way they are. And all the rest of this doesn't matter. All, all the, whether we've done it right or wrong or whether we've been married five times or we've, no matter what we've done, everybody's a divine spark of God and helping them find that reconnection. And in every moment, no matter what people have experienced before, they can have that experience. Correct. Right. You don't have to get into the right religion to find God. There is no... Or meditate for 50 years. No, no, no. And it's potentially we're all, right you know, there. Yeah, right. exactly. It's, it's that moment. And that was the moment. It was a, and the way the Course of Miracles says it, it's just opening the door to say there's got to be another way. And that's what I did. I said, there's got to be another way. I'm miserable. You know, I, my life is miserable. You know, uh, I want to know what truth is. I want to know all these metaphysical experiences that they talked about in the Bible, why don't they happen to us today as Christians or whatever? And I really went, oh, honestly opened the door and said, I want to find that. I want to know that. And so it wasn't anything I did other than be saying, open. be open and I don't know. Would you show me? And so it's just been this amazing ride of miracles and awakening. And it took me a good eight years uh, from that point, and this happened in 1995, well, 93 when I made that question to God, and then the process, and it took me a good eight to ten years where one day I woke up and I said, oh, I love me just the way I am. Oh, I'm okay, and that voice in the head that always judges or telling you you're not good at was totally gone, and that wasn't a process that I did. That was a process that I invited into me to be done. And that's what was the amazing thing, is that it was a co-creation of my intention. I want to know what love is. I want, I want to be that in the world. I want to be a channel of divine love. I want it to flow through me and that process of cleansing and awakening to get to that point. Now, am I perfected being? Absolutely not. I'm in human form. 
but that has always been my goal to choose and apply love wherever I go. And why don't you walk us through, so in 1993, you had this epiphany in a way, mm -hmm. this, my life is reasonably good and perfect in certain ways, but it's, it's nothing in other ways, and I need to, to know the truth, I need to know who I really am. Mm -hmm. and, and then you open the door to that. Take us through the process of, of coming into more of that knowing and the recognition and what experiences you had. Uh, yes. It was, it was a good year from when I made that God show me what truth is. And then these little metaphysical um, experiences started happening in my life. One of the most powerful ones that kind of blew my socks off, if you want to call it that way, was um, at the time um, I was in a marriage that I was really, really unhappy with. And he was an alcoholic and I was going on this spiritual journey and we'd just been growing apart. But at the time, my husband wanted to buy this little business because he was afraid he was going to lose his job, and it was a newspaper business. So here I got on my spiritual journey, and I'm driving in my car, in my little minivan, because I had three kids, but the kids weren't in the car. But I'm crying, and I'm saying, God, please don't let this happen. I don't want to do this. If, if he buys this, I'm going to end up running it. I'm just sobbing. I mean, just tears. You knew like, that this was going to be. This, this, this was the was... end of me. I just knew it. <laughs> I was never finish. going to be able to find God because I was going to end up running this business. So as I'm driving in the car and just pouring my heart out to God, I hear this audible male voice that says, Do not be afraid. I will be with you. And I turned around to look to see who was in the car. And then I heard it again. Do not be afraid. I will be with you. And this incredible peace just melted down my body. And I knew it was okay. And I allowed it to be okay. And sure enough, he came home the next day and signed the papers to the newspaper. And I knew I was going to end up running it because I had the graphic arts background. And within two weeks, he had another job. So he was not there to help me, which I never knew it was the beginning of my transcending or moving into a new world or the new me it was moving me out of that old miserable life into the new and here i was resisting it please how, i don't want to go here how often do we do that exactly exactly <laughs> so um so that that was just probably one of the major oh what do you call that experiences that let me know there was something either out there or in and there it was unmistakable and unmistakable happy unmistakable I mean it was audible male and booming voice I will be with you Wow! and so went that path and but little did I know that was the path that was my awakening path that I resisted at the beginning which uh, just opened the doors and and then I had asked God to show me what love was and through all that process that was how my husband now, Milt, was led into my life. Never saw it coming, you know. I didn't know. I thought maybe I'd have this blinding light experience where you fall on the floor and you feel God's love, and that's how I would know what love is. But it came through another person, and I, he was the first person I saw God in. Of all those years of churching and going to church and, and all that stuff, I, I recognized God in him, and... Uh, it, it was like from one minute to the next. I just, it was like this blinders, oh, this is what love is, you know. And uh, so God brought Milt into my life, which then allowed me to come to love me, you know. Because I, if I didn't know what love was, how could I serve this God? How could I serve this divine essence if I didn't know what love was? And it came in human form through my husband, Milt. And it was a truly amazing. It was a heart-opening experience, almost like a explosion. And, um, and I go, oh, this is God. This is what God's all about. Which then my husband, Milt, was the one that led me into this whole concept. And believe it or not, and this is going to sound really strange, but Milt is 24 years older than I am. And because I knew he'd probably leave the planet before I did, I was freaked out about, oh, I won't have him forever. So that's what piqued my interest to see if I could be a medium. 
and I started saying, hmm, I wonder. So that's when I started meditating. So you want to talk to Milt after he leaves the physical body? So you... Oh, yeah, he, go, he always says, oh, boy, I can't wait. You know, every time we, <laughs> we talk right. about that, he'll go, oh, right. I can't wait. You know, right. like, oh, he'll write a book through me or something right. like that. But that was right. the catalyst right. for me to explore that whole journey of the mediumship abilities, you know which I found that because I went to God, just all the other channels to connect with spirit was an easy connection. So I didn't do my mediumship abilities just to talk to people who passed over. I wanted to know God. And so I went straight to the source and just the other aspects of being able to talk to these divine beings and the people who passed over were just a side benefit of it, you know. And so that's how the mediumship started. Um, and a lot of it was because Milt's wife, Mary Jane, had passed away in 1981. And he was very open metaphysically and was connected, had lived in Virginia Beach with the Edgar Casey Foundation and those kind of things. So he was so comfortable with the metaphysical and, and that kind of thing. So he opened the door to the fact that we can communicate with our loved ones and those kind of things. So then I started having my grandfather and my grandmother show up in dreams and uh, it, it was just like this incredible opening. So my abilities weren't some anything I was born with. It was because of that one moment when I said, I want to know what truth is. And then the experiences started happening. So which I think is really exciting because that means if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. Anybody can become open their abilities. But I really think if it, it's done through love, when the heart is opened, that opens those channels. And, and I'm sure you've talked to people who've had near-death experience. They've had this incredible in, inner connection with love. And that love, they come back, and they're intuitive when they come back. And so when you really hit that moment of div, experience of divine love, it opens you up on all levels. And then uh, just as Milt was an example to me to manifest it in the world, I knew that's what I wanted to become. And so that's the journey that I went on uh, to become, you know, to reawaken that love that I didn't even know existed uh, and that be a channel of that in the world. And so you, you just started being open to that and then you started getting messages or how, how did that work, that this mediumship became, you know, a real thing for you and, and you know, people could come and, and experience love and loved ones and the whole thing through that? Well, I like to call myself the reluctant medium. I went into this with heels dug in the floor and fingernails all the way. You know, God, anything but this, you know. I don't want to do this, you know. And uh, it's just that it just opened up. And so when I would meditate, when I would pray, I would make connections. I would see pictures. I even have what I call my third eye chalkboard where... Spirit will write things out for me, you know, like if I'm doing a reading, I'll get written out mom and go, oh, this is your mom, she's coming in, you know. And so my third eye had opened as well, which allowed me to communicate with spirit in that way. I would have to say it was milk that pushed me or was the wind beneath my wings, so to speak, that, that encouraged me to go in, because it was really hard. I mean, here I'm coming from a fundamentalist Christian background where all of this was of the devil and you're not supposed to do this. And, oh yeah, my it was God. all the work of the it devil. It was all the work of the devil, yeah. <laughs> and you were entering into it, but uh, reluctantly. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, but it was Milt because he was so comfortable in this world. He's the one that encouraged me to continue to do it. And then my inner guidance my connections ask us, we were living in Orlando, Florida at the time when, when Milt and I came together, and we were asked to move up to Virginia Beach near the Edgar Casey Foundation. We moved Leave up. Leave Mickey Mouse. We no, left Mickey Mouse. Oh, God. Sold no. everything. I could have. No, and it's yeah. just because it was an inner guidance. Inner guidance, right, yeah. Right. And so we sold everything, you know. We, we have a tendency to do that. You know, spirit says to go, we sell everything, 19 places, put what they put in the car and go. And we've followed that, uh, you know, but we moved to Virginia Beach and a lot of my healing took place there. And I was near that Edgar Casey library, which has all those incredible. And I was like a sponge. I just oh, read wow. everything. It was just part of the process. And it was just beautiful. And, uh, and again, Milt 
just allowing me my process and my own inner healing. And so it was in Virginia Beach where people were mo more open to the idea of readings and connecting with spirit that I started doing readings. And uh, so we would start people, you know, invite people over from um, ARE that we knew and started, it just started very organically, very slowly, and it built up over the years. Probably the best thing that happened was one of my clients uh, called James Van Prague and said, hey, you've got, you've got to uh, have her on as a medium on your website. And he called me up and said, would you do a reading for me and three of my friends? And I said, sure, I'll do that. And I did that. And he put uh, me up as probably the number, the fourth medium he had put up on his website to refer people to uh, for healing grief and those kind of things. And that's how the mediumship started. And so now it's just a matter of phone being by phone and I do all the work through the phone I have a website and that kind of thing even though the mediumship is has been the way the divine has used to bring people into our lives to bring them further right I understand right. It, it was never about the me mediumship right. all along it was the end not the medium <laughs> right exactly yeah, yeah you right. know all so, right maybe we'll get into that a little more and we also I want to get into your connection with Mother Mary yes and the new healing center yes I think that'll be great and people are really interested excellent so what we'll show is the second half of the Guru Ganesha beautiful beautiful video uh, and again thanks Guru Ganesha and Spirit Voyage for making it available and then we'll see a beautiful art piece from Marjo Lee from Canada okay enjoy so somebody said to me the other day, you're going to stand? I said, look, I turned 60. <laughs> I'm so grateful I can st still stand, you know? And I, I got to tell you, it's great to be back in the 60s.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So Guru Ganesha, really powerful, really beautiful. So thank you Guru Ganesha, thank you Spirit Voice for making that available to us and just so lovely. And we'll show more of their stuff and you know they have a lot of people associated with uh, Spirit Voyage so uh, we'll show more of their videos. So the incredible piece of art you're seeing uh, that was done, a new original piece for the Healing Art Project done by Marja Lee. It's called Healing Love. It's an oil on canvas. Uh, she's from Quebec, Ontario, Canada. Her website is www.nmarjoli.com and marjolie.com. And here's what Marjolie talks about this extraordinary piece, Healing Love. First appeared small white bubbles surrounded with red lines. Then the flowers grew around them. The clouds appeared and I saw blue eyes in the sky. Then the ground was covered with green, pink, and orange touches. The earth and the sky are connected by love. Everything that lives and breathes here is in itself a bridge between the two. And it is the strength and harmony of our bridges that give birth, heal, and soothe. And on the website, if you go to Heaven to Earth Art and go to Marjorie, she did this whole thing in French as well. So again, anybody who wants to be part of the art project, everyone, everyone is welcome to join us. No skill level required, any size, any format. If you just move to be part of the collaboration, the creativity, the healing of the heart of the planet, the more people involved, the better the healing, the more the love. So, and go to the website, Heaven to Earth Art, and see if you're enlivened to, to, to collaborate with us on that. So, well, we're back with Susan. So we were talking at the end the last time about that a really strong influence and a really strong heart opening experience for you is, is your interactions with Mother Mary and, mm. and how it's led you literally around the globe. And uh, yeah. So why don't you talk to us a little about that? <clears throat> well, Spirit in uh, 2000, uh, actually 2001, asked us to move to Australia. And of course, saying we'll go anywhere you want us to do, we'll go. So I moved to, my husband and I sold everything again, packed up. And it was a scary thing, and I think part of that was just the test to see, would we do it, you know? Would we let go of our lives, our ordered lives and our homes and, and, and go do this? And we did, and it was a wonderful experience because the energy in Australia is just incredibly divine feminine. It's like going back into the 50s to me, just... Everybody knows everybody and everybody's friendly and it was just a beautiful experience. But while we were in Australia, again, in my meditation, I started to get, go to Medjugorje. Go to Med and every time I meditated, go to Medjugorje. And, uh, and of course, those that may not know who Medjugorje is, but uh, Mother Mary's been appearing there since uh, 1981. She appeared to six children on a hillside there. And I'm not Catholic. And where is it? It's in Bosnia. Oh, Bosnia, okay. And I'm not Catholic, so uh, I'm like, I don't want to go there. I don't know what to do with Mother Mary. I don't know. I really didn't know her or have an affinity toward her, but I kept getting go to Medjugorje. So I you know, kept telling Milt, well, we're supposed to go. So we went down to get tickets, and there was only one ticket available, and he couldn't go. And he says, well, why don't you go by yourself? So here I am, never traveled by myself, 35 hours flight, fly to Bosnia because of this inner guidance that says go to Medjugorje. And so I got there, uh, and I was so taken care of. it. I mean, this, it was just miraculous how I was taken care of and ran into people that I needed to run into along the way, even in the uh, Vienna airport that were on a tour from America. and They adopted me as their own. I mean, just everything was just incredible. But the first day I was there, uh, I was praying and meditating in front of the statue that sat in front of St. James Church. And again, another one of these audible voice moments. This beautiful female voice said, You've invited Jesus into your heart. Now you're going to invite me. And that's how I met Mother Mary. It was just like, again, this heart opening of, oh, the Divine Mother. You know, in, in my religious faith, we always talked about the Divine Father. Never knew what to do. That. And all of a sudden, I just had this total understanding of the Divine aspect of the Mother. And that was my introduction to Mother Mary. And there were so many miraculous uh, things that happened during that trip. Um, where I was just, 
I let go of judgment. It was just a beautiful, miraculous trip. But that was my first introduction to Mother Mary. Had no idea I would end up working with her and serving the divine feminine because that's what, uh, where we've come to this point where we serve the divine feminine in helping bring that energy back into the planet. And uh, so then she began speaking to me. She would come in my dreams. Oftentimes when I would meditate, when I was feeling my worst, working through my pain, she would come with this incredible loving embrace to say, you know, it's okay and I still love you. And so in that relationship I built with her, she taught me how to love me. She brought that compassion and awakening to realize that I was worthy of love, that I was worth something, that uh, I could uh, express love and be that in the world. And, and literally that's what took place in her relationship with me, which was just truly amazing. Uh, one of the favorite uh, things she has told me, which is, of course, for everybody, but her, the best thing she's ever said, she goes, my dearest child, you are the miracle you have been seeking. You are the heart you want to find. You are God's gift to the world. You have been created as divine. You are my heart. I am yours. There is nothing separating the two. You are my beloved child. My gift to you is you. And doesn't that say that in a nutshell? That's what we're all looking for in life is where's that miracle? Oh, you mean I'm it. I'm the miracle, yeah. And each one of us are the miracle. And we are so loved and we are so embraced and we are so uh, divine in our beingness. And that's what she has taught me and that's what we uh, have taken on as our mission to help other people find that same connection, that find same love, that same heart awakening that we talked about before in recognizing our own divinity. And then you had an experience with John of God down in his place, and now that led you to this extraordinary you know, healing center you Correct, have. yes. <clears throat> um, and this happened, uh, again, start when I meditated, my third eye chalkboard, go to John of God, go visit John of God. And they're pretty tenacious, too, because if we say, no, I don't want to do that, or we don't have the money, the money would always show up, you know. But they would keep saying, go, until we committed to going. It would be go, go, go. And when, once we committed to going, then they would let up and ease up, you know. So we did go. And that would be every day, every time you Every made. time I meditated. If there was something I was <laughs> supposed to do, great. it was like, go do this, go do this. And I'd say, no, I don't want to go do that, until I finally surrendered to what was being asked of us. Very cool. <laughs> so we went uh, to visit John of God for two weeks, and it was just miraculous. And what was really nice about John of God, the healing casa down there, and uh, again, for those that don't know who John of God is, but he's a, a, a spiritual healer, and many people go there for physical healing. But what happens is, is that there are doctors in spirit that work on you while you're visiting a John of God. So it's not really John of God doing the work. It's the entities in the spirit realm that work on you and help you heal. And uh, so when I went down there, there were these many uh, healings of my own self-worth and, and my feelings of unworthiness and whether I was good enough. And it was so powerful. The dreams were just incredible. So we had this wonderful trip. But the Sunday that we, the last Sunday that we were there, there was like a healing Sarah, uh, mass kind of thing going on. And we were there praying, meditating, and seeing. And I was just there meditating. And, of course, my third eye chalkboard, uh, I get Jesus showing up. He goes, and uh, he writes out, we need you and Milt to create a casa in the United States. And I said, what? He said, we need you and Milt to create a casa in the United States. And it's to be called the Casa de Santa Maria. And, of course, my thought, first thought was, well, Jesus, what about you? And he goes, it's for my mother. And I said, oh. And so 
I said, okay, and I told Milt, and we both just kind of laughed, and we said, oh, okay, we'll do that. Of course, we had no money. We had no idea how we could manifest uh, creating a casa, and uh, we were told that uh, the casa was a div the casa we were creating in the United States was a divine feminine casa, where Mother Mary and her holy helpers and those beings that work with her would come and work on people to help them heal. And the focus was to be to heal the broken heart and to help people find their life's purpose and to help bring joy and comfort and peace to their soul. So it had this whole different flavor, the John of God Casa, where the entities worked on it was more about physical healing, even though they worked on the other levels. Uh, the Casa we were asking to create was a divine feminine to help people move into the heart. So we said, okay, you know, we followed this inner guidance, not knowing how it was going to work out or if it was going to work out. We came home to Sedona. We had just bought our first house in Sedona and we were all happy there and we're thinking, okay, God's going to, it's all going to be in, it's all going to happen in Sedona. And then, uh, no, you know, the land was really expensive, but it was really interesting how I found out about the San Luis area. My father passed away on Christmas Day of 2004. And I was on my way to the, uh, the funeral and to be with the family. And I happened to pull in the Delta magazine looking through and it was talking about the San Luis Valley and this land that was there and they had a, it was for sale. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? And I just kind of pulled it out and folded it up and stuck it in my you know, my purse and then forgot about it. So after, you know, we took care of the family's needs and my dad passing and which is a whole nother experience in itself, but it was beautiful. Um, came back home and, uh, and then I remember one day, oh, San Luis Valley. And I showed it to Milt and Milt says, no way, we're not moving up there. That's 8,000 feet up in the air. That's too cold up there. We want to live here. Same thing. Started meditating, go to San Luis. Go to San Luis. And no, it took us five months to be wow. willing to drive up there. And Even to go visit. Yes, because we didn't <laughs> want to be You didn't want to have to be there. You didn't want to like it. Please don't be there, you know. Right. So finally, after five months, we said, okay, let's, let's take a drive up there. And we tur almost turned around five times because we were so adamant. We didn't want Mother Mary's Casa to be up in the mountains, up in, in the cold. So we drive all the way up, uh, spend the night in Taos, go up, look at land. Oh, this is desert and sagebrush, and the mountains are beautiful, and there's snow there, but no, she doesn't want it there. And we looked at some properties that might work, and we thought, well, okay, maybe. So, but still not committed to letting the casa be there. So we went back to Taos, and that night uh, we went to sleep, and I woke up in the middle of the night with hearing this female voice that said, Surrender to the land. And in that moment I said, Okay, if this is where you want it, if this is where you want it to be, I'll go. We went home. I told Milt, we, uh, and by the time we got home we had committed that we'll just sell everything and move again, even though we didn't want it to be there. We even eat, though you just bought your first home, even there though was we a had, lot of momentum to be there. Yeah, blah, we had just blah, bought blah, our blah. first home, owned it, not even oh, eight months, you know. Finally got to the point financially where we could own a home and uh, not owned it. So anyway, we said, okay, we'll go. And we emailed three people, and one of them wrote back and said, I'll buy the land for you. And we said, ah, Okay. And she this really, was the, the piece of property that was actually advertised in the Delta? It, yeah, it was that land for sale in, it wasn't that particular, oh, was it say, wasn't that, that property. That miraculous uh, Delta airline. I know, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> but, but the gentleman who offered, he had worked for NASA, and he said, you know what, I, I just sold my home and made a buku of money, and I think I need to use it to serve spirit. Wow, that's far out. Yeah. And he says, I'll buy the land for you. So by October, we went back up. First piece of land we looked at, we knew it was it. And uh, I thought it would be in the mountains, but Mother Mary said, nope, I want it sitting out in the open. And uh, so 30, 
he bought for us 38 acres. We now have 101 acres where the CASA, as we develop it and grow it and, and make it in, as it comes into being, because it's grown really organically from this point, uh, that's where it's going to be. And then uh, once we bought the land, uh, we sold everything and put the house on the market, had three offers, full price offers in one day. Uh, we had bought the house for 149 It sold for 2099 And so then we had the money to be able to make this move, which never... So just all these incredible little miraculous things. So we and, moved up. And then up. three months later, the crash happened. And it was, was three worth, weeks later. And then three, it was worth half of what you bought it for. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not even worth that now. I think it's right. worth like 80, 84000 right. you know. So it's like yeah. perfect timing. Yeah. And so we committed to go. And then so I get what I call shower messages. You know, like I'm taking a shower and I'll say, oh, this is what we're supposed to do. So it's like, oh, she, she said the first thing she wants us to do is to build this 300-foot prayer and meditation garden, non-denominational, open to all, people of all beliefs or no beliefs, to create this space. And in the, in the center of the garden, and it, looks, it will look like a Mandela, was to be a totem pole carving of her and uh, it was to be the centerpiece, and it was to be called Mother Mary's Garden. So this was the first piece that was to be on the land. Um, so we let people that we've helped through healing and readings and those things through the years know what we do, and we raised the money, and uh, we uh, were able to hire this wonderful master totem pole carver from Alaska, Lee Wallace, and he... We, had, we now have this 10 and a half foot totem pole carving of Mother Mary that we were able to install uh, September 18th of 2008. She went in. And that was the beginning of the CASA and its work. And then we've spent, uh, you know, since 2008 raising the money and adding. We added our Star Child Circle and our Stone Healing Circle. We just added last year our two labyrinths. And so it's grown very organically just from people that we know and we've helped. We've not really advertised it or gone out and talked much about what Spirit was creating there. But it's been quite magical when we need it. It's come in. And, uh, but one of the really cool things we have found about how magical the San Luis Valley is and the energy is there and the vortexes are there that I never knew. And, uh, but what has happened is the uh, concept of the spinning sun, have you heard of that, that happens in Lourdes and Medjugorje? It happens in the San Luis Valley. So you can look at the sun it looks like an eclipse, it spins, beautiful colors come out of it. And uh, so her presence is really there, and we've had really, really, really miraculous things. So now the way it is, because we haven't been advertising what we're creating and what Spirit has asked us to create, it's really her work, people find it, you know, and they go, oh, my gosh, you're not going to believe this. I'm sitting there praying, and, you know, all of a sudden this rainbow appears or, you know, just really neat things um, that have happened. This is the first year where we've gotten to the point where, that we can start doing healing retreats. And so we were able to, I put it out as a leap of faith. I said, okay, everybody, I think it's time for us to start doing healing retreats because we've always done freeing your spirit retreats and intuition retreats and we've done uh, tours like to England and Bosnia and, and stuff like that. But it was like there was a shift that it's time to really start the work this year. And so we put out a newsletter with a leap of faith, and uh, we said we want to rent this building and start having retreats, and we need $12,000 to make this happen. And we had the money within a week. Wow. That's amazing. And we were able to rent the building, and uh, so we're starting our first uh, spiritual growth retreat as uh, Awakening Your Intuitive Heart. Beautiful. I mean, look, we're coming to the end of this incredible hour. Ah, oh, so, unbelievable. Awakening Your Intuitive Heart. Awakening Your Intuitive Heart. Uh, so, if you want any information about Susan, uh, the, the art project, the center, anything, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. God bless mm. you. Thank you. Mm.